The challenge is to sign my salmon started more than 50 years ago after the dams were constructed that blocked access to their, to their spawning sites. It wasn't possible for them to, uh, to reproduce in the wild anymore. So sometime later, in the, in the early 70s, uh, government officials decided to do something about, about that and they started to try and catch salmon that were returning to reproduce, took them into hatcheries, and created artificial so-called brood stocks of, of, of individuals that could then be released back into the wild to maintain the numbers of, of, of salmon. Now this was uh, a, a very, very understandable and a very, a very good idea. The problem was is that there were so few individuals left that in general, in any given year, they could only catch 10 sal reproducing salmon or, or less. And that meant that the brood stocks that even though every female could produce thousands of eggs and therefore thousands of offspring, these thousands of offspring were all related to, to each other. This means that the, the genetic size of Saima salmon is actually less, probably less than, than 10 individuals. So in, in one sense, you can say that even though there are more Saima salmon in, in, in Lake Saima than there are Saima seals, Saima salmon is actually more endangered than the Saima seal. Our, our genetic analyses of, of Saimar salmon have unfortunately shown that, that Saimar salmon does indeed have very low levels of genetic variation. In fact, out of all of the salmon populations that we've analysed, which is more than 50, Saimar salmon has the lowest level of genetic variation out of any of, any of them. But there have been some very encouraging signs recently. In fact, this year, there have been hundreds of Saimar salmon uh, mature salmon returning to, to spawn, which is the largest number, number uh, since, since the dams were, uh, were, were constructed. Now, this is a very, uh, this is a very good, good start, but even though the numbers of individuals decrease, it doesn't mean that the, the level of genetic variation has increased. Most of these individuals are, are, are likely related, and thus the genetic variation is still low. So what, what effects has the low level of genetic variation had on, on Saimar salmon? Well, we've done research to look at this in, in several, several different ways. And, and all of these different uh, approaches have shown that the low level of variation does seem to be having negative effects on Saimar salmon. For example, we've shown that Saimar salmon that have lower levels of genetic variation, they have lower levels of aggression. So that may mean that they're unable to fight for territories as, as juveniles. This is a small, small pitch about this, about this size. Uh, another study, in another study, we showed that Saimar salmon that have uh, severe deformities, so two heads or a zigzag, a zigzag spine, have lower levels of genetic variation than other Saimar salmon that, um, that don't have any, any such deformities. So combined, this suggests that there are signs of inbreeding depression in the Saimar salmon population. 